Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Lee Welter and John Cameron. Lee is, the, uh, is a retired physician. John, the, uh, a development officer at Pacific Legal Foundation, author of Rewire, Rekill, and Aristocracy. Welcome to the show. Uh, today Thanks, is, a, is a big, uh, a bit, or this week is a big week for anniversaries. It's the, uh, the anniversary of the, of the moon landing. It's also the five-year anniversary of the police strangulation of Eric Garner for selling Lucy cigarettes. And the interesting fact about that is even though the cops used illegal methods to subdue a guy who had the, you know, was doing the misdemeanor of selling cig cigarettes one by one on the streets of New York, no penalties have uh, happened to any of the cops involved in that. No winners in this. My, my disappointment is why is there a law telling people what kind of cigarettes they can sell when and where and why? I'll tell you why, because in, in, in New York, the taxes Revenue. on cigarettes is probably five or ten times more than the, the cost of the tobacco, and the state and the city of New York depend on that revenue. And if you're selling Lucy's, presumably you're selling Lucy's that haven't been taxed, although I don't know how they know that, but in any case, they don't want to make they don't, they want to make sure that no uh, gram of tobacco passes the uh, gets past the the tax man. I so. think it's actually worse than that. I think uh, I'm I'm trying to picture where Eric Gardner would get untaxed cigarettes unless he went to an Smuggler. Indian reservation somewhere, and or uh, I think they're actually taxed at a higher rate in uh, in um, Canada. Uh, I'm I'm. I'm going to check the facts after the show, but I'm, it would be my guess. I'll bet you, I don't know, part of a drink later, maybe, maybe a whole drink. That uh, I'm not going to take that bet. You're going to say that he was buying them, off, buying from, buying them from uh, the corner drugstore and just marking them up a little bit. Well, he's, but and then instead of you know people having to come up with uh, what is it, eight dollars a pack or whatever, then you know if he was selling them for fifty cents a piece, that probably wouldn't be enough. Eighty Dollar, cents eighty cents whatever. a piece, so he's doubling his money. Somebody gets their cigarette they need to have really bad. They don't have to pick a butt up off the sidewalk. Now, I'm willing to bet that was uh, that was even worse, that these were fully taxed cigarettes that he was strangled for selling. So, you know, it's um, you know, as libertarians, this uh, as, as people who are citizens of the United States and believe in constitutional protection, uh, and then, you know, no penalties for cops is, you know, basically the idea that uh, sovereign immunity um, or qualified immunity is granted to all these different government um, employees, this is a new thing. This wasn't spelled out in the Constitution. It's nowhere in constitutional law, but it's coming really into force in in, in you know, since the New Deal. And, and that's, that's horrible. I mean, you know, it's like the Star Chamber from, from uh, the English kings, which basically caused a revolution in England where the, the king's men were held to a different standard than the rest of the people. And that's something we need to eliminate in this country. And, but, and it doesn't matter who they are, if you strangle somebody, there should be using an illegal chokehold. It's, it's illegal by the standards of the police department itself. They were doing something that was illegal, and when he said, "I can't breathe," they didn't stop strangling. The last time I was on a jury panel, we were all asked, "Do you give a policeman more or less credibility than anybody else?" No, they're just the same as anybody else. Their testimony, we expect mm -hmm. it to be honest and truthful, but. Uh, there are no guarantees, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate. I, and I'd be, I'm going to guess if you answered that way, you were probably not part of the jury. Well, I get, I did. Well, I actually I got kicked off because uh, the uh, the defense attorney saw me smiling. He said, "I see you smiling. What did you, what, what's the smile about?" And I said, "Oh, I, somebody mentioned that your a client did not have a good command of English, and." It could be that you're going to say he misunderstood something and he used a phrase that uh, he turned in common So you, you were struck by the defense? Go on. Yeah, well. Yes. Uh, well, you, the other uh, thing is that you, you brought up cops and being held to the same standards. There's, there's something in the law called Chevron deference and our deference when it comes to these independent regulatory agencies that are, uh, that are uh, judge, jury, and executioner and create way more 
things that are actually laws, they call them regulations, but they're laws, they, their, um, their interpretation of their own rules has a higher standard in, under the law than an, a citizen's interpretation of the rules. So the government's employees basically bearing witness in, in that kind of trial have a, a, a free pass. But that hasn't stopped outrages, and, and I'm, I'm thinking beyond Eric Garner, which is a, a, no, a one-man tragedy, is... and look at the Waco slaughter, and uh, who was it? Uh, Idaho. Janet Reno? Who mm -hmm. oh, the, yeah, the, the, took, took credit. Took a little, took a took little kid, sent it back that. to Cuba. Oh, yeah, okay, that too. Yeah, yeah and, the, and what's, what was the other one? Oh, Janet yeah. Reno, that was one piece of work. Yes, and then there was the... Um, uh, Lavoie Finnicum, who was trying to uh, establish his rangeland and and was heading oh, yeah, to Oregon, Oregon up, for yeah. a friendly uh, hearing with a with a sheriff, and he got stopped and gunned down by the I guess that was the FBI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, executed. Yes. Executed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the shot shot point blank. Yeah. No. No. So, you know, we we. Uh, if you would, if you would scrub the names off of this, and talk about it happening in Mexico or Venezuela or something, people would be be aghast and say, you know, I'm so glad that can't happen here. And then guess what, folks? It does happen here, and it happens here with uh, some regularity. And we need to do. And usually, we can to stop it happens it. to people who, for one reason or another, are not. Uh, popular with mainstream media. In other words, minorities or uh, right-wing, people who are perceived as being right-wing radicals mm -hmm. or left-wing radicals, mm -hmm. people who are not considered to be, you know, just like you and I. Well, we are libertarians, so we're very, very different than the vast majority well, of the we population. Well, we would probably be in the, in the uh, I say you and I, I'm talking about mm -hmm. people who are, uh, in anything outside. No, the, no, I, no, no, any, yeah, but, oh, this is no, there's no question. Yeah. Uh, that uh, uh, with the, the, the completion of the Obama regime and with uh, Donald Trump having the uh, gall to defeat sweet Hillary Clinton, what an outrage. And they, they, Trump derangement syndrome is very, very present in many instances. It's, it's, it's crazy in a way. Well, he has brought us. Uh, more trillion dollar federal deficits. Uh, in fact, the Trump administration announced just recently a one trillion federal deficit projected for 2019. And that's after the tax cut, which was supposed to raise revenues enough to uh, uh, compensate for, uh, oh, they raised spending too, huh? There, there is a role for government. It's protecting lives, liberty, and property. Everything else isn't worthwhile. That's it. What would we be paying for that? Once, wasn't it? Well, but what I'm, my, my point is, we yes. have a one trillion dollar deficit because, obviously, the, the the revenue went up even though even even with the tax cut, revenue is up uh, year oh, to no year. No question. But, but not enough to increase. But not enough to compensate for the fact that expenditures went went up even more. And where are the expenditures going up primarily? In the so-called off-limits part of the budget. The the entitlement part of the budget. And I'm you know, talking that, about Social just, Security, Medicare, Medicaid, interest on the federal debt, not so much with interest rates as low as they are, but it's the, it's the untouchable part of the federal deficit that's going up, along with military spending mm -hmm. and, and, uh, well, and military a few others. Military spending is, 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 is in the bucket of spit that is this. It's about 30%. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't call that spit. But. Well, okay. Maybe it's a couple of spits. But, uh, you know, the, the, what's funny is, is that this, this guy Trump that... Uh, Actually, compared to, I think, all the campaign promises that all the presidents have made in history, he's actually come through on a lot of his promises. But this one ain't one of, of his, them. One of his promises was not only to eliminate the deficit, but to eliminate, and this is where I knew he was, uh, is it hyperbola or hyperbola? Hyperbolizing. Hyperbolizing, <laughs> where he was maybe stretching, he was maybe telling a little story, he said he was going to eliminate the deficit. 
and he was going to eliminate the national debt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a good so. goal. He's he, he, not there yet. No, but, uh, no. Or, nor is he ever going to get there. A question. Are well, there I any? mean, maybe maybe his, his uh, big game plan is to, uh, you know, destroy the fiat currency and and after the economy Go collapses and Go, goes bankrupt, yeah. then you know that would uh, it, it, a million that, yeah. a million of these uh, yeah. phony dollars will be worth a several new several, several hundred trillion dollar you know do a Venezuela. Or, yeah, and or, then or, you know Zimbabwe. when we that would that would that would eliminate the federal debt. Yeah. Yeah, if we ever survive the bread lines and the riots and all the rest of that stuff, then you know we we wouldn't have a deficit. Are there any fiduciaries in government? That would be my dream to make sure that everybody has a fiduciary sense and they're committed to it. And failure would automatically mean you have such sweet dreams, Lee. Ousted. That's what I like about I, you. That's why I can sleep at night. Yeah. But what we're seeing uh, that I think is most troubling in the United States today is the rise of authoritarian populism, both on the right, as represented by Trump, and on the left, as represented by Antifa. And the uh, and the the, the AOCs uh, AOC the world and and, and, the and, and the that, Bernie yeah. Sanders and the rest. Thoughts? Uh, it's very sad, isn't it? And 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 what comes to mind is Thomas Jefferson's warning. And, and this may or may not be underlying the problem, but I think it is. He said in much more flowerly uh, uh, words, "A poorly educated society will not remain free." I couldn't, didn't stand a chance of memorizing his, uh, his language. Yeah, okay. But, uh, and I think it's true. And where do people get educated or indoctrinated? Mandatory monopoly government schooling modeled after the 1819 Prussian schools designed to produce obedient Factory, middle managers and factory, military factory officers. Factory workers. Exactly. Factory workers and, and people draftees. To, people to meet the whims of the ruling Elites. And I think what we need to understand is that populism is the form of government that takes place whenever you, those who uh, want to ascend to power, figure out an us versus them narrative. Oh, and they yes. put together an us. Yes. In, in the case of Trump, it's, uh, it's uh, lower middle class whites for the most part. Yes. And the them is everybody else, yes. uh, minorities and uh, immigrants in particular. Uh, so it's an us versus them narrative that his base is going to be rah rahing about, and enough other people will ignore if he's saying enough enough things about deregulation or uh, whatever else they they are they're in favor of. On the left, it's the us versus the them. The them being the one percenters, the people who. You know the the corporate bigwigs, the corporations, and the the ones that make rich, campaign the, donations the, that get the wealthy, what they want. <laughs> the wealthy, those are the those are the them, and the us is everybody. You know the us union members and working staffs. So you have this us versus them dichotomy, and nobody's talking to each other anymore. Union uh, workers are not talking to employers. Uh, people who live in in Lily White. Suburban communities are not talking to people who live in the south side of Chicago. You end up with an us versus them that is impossible to uh, navigate with uh, any form of civil discourse. I, um, I, I was listening out of the corner of my ear, but I wanted to, to share a quote, and I, I should just write it down and carry it around with me. Um, you talked about uh, uh, Jefferson stating that uh, basically the ignorant will, won't remain free. Yes. And Isabel Patterson, one of the, I guess, founding mothers of yes. uh, um, kind of libertarian thought, this is her quote, there can be no greater stretch of arbitrary power than to seize children from their parents, teach them whatever the authorities decree they shall be taught, and expropriate from the parents the funds to pay for the procedure. And um, what's happening is there, there are a number of people who think that the dumbing down of public schools is an intentional process that is designed to uh, create sheep who don't have the wherewithal to understand that, that there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Because you won't find people who go to uh, a school that their parents pay for and direct their kids to and have some control over the content and courses putting up with the lunacy that these populists preach on either side. And I think, um, 
um, you know, if an unintended consequence goes on long enough, which is the dumbing down of the American student, uh, except in some extraordinary schools and some private schools and some charter schools, which the educational establishment happens, then it's no longer an unintended consequence, it's an intended consequence. These people want dumb people. I, I have no idea who, who they think is going to fly the airplane or create the computer or do the open heart surgery, but I think it's an intended they figure consequence. They, they figure they can teach people skills in technical schools and, and uh, you know, uh, that's you know skills are easy are relatively easy to teach. It's a clear thinking, uh, philosophical thinking that's that they're trying to wipe out. There is a detailed explanation in a World Net Daily article uh, by Ellis Washington, titled "The Long March Through the Institutions." Talks about how the rebels of the 1970s, the ones that were uh, at the one of the political campaigns, making all kinds of trouble. They said. They now are faculty in the universities and the union teachers in the government monopoly schools and they've been very effective. Yeah. Have a look at, oh, I, I hate to get too far off track, but what I call gullible warming or the cult, of, warming. The, I like that. The cult of anthropogenic yeah, yeah. climate Let, alteration. Before we go down that rabbit hole, oh, let's, let's, let's take a look at, okay. at uh, something that uh, has happened as a, I guess you could call it a spin-off of, uh, of uh, Bitcoin and all the rest of the, uh, the cryptocurrency uh, movement. Bitcoin uh, was started as a, uh, a currency, totally privately controlled uh, on the web, 21 million uh, units of Bitcoin, uh, maximum amount, so that there would be no uh, possibility of price inflation of Bitcoin. Uh, and, uh, and it's gone up, it's gone down, but, but uh, it's survived for, what, 10, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's uh, done exactly what it said it was going to do, uh, not without growing pains, but, but it's essentially done exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, and it's spawned lots of imitators, uh, uh, lots of other uh, cryptocurrencies, and a cryptocurrency, so-called, uh, launched by, by Facebook. They, they want, uh, Facebook wants to launch Libra, Libra, a cryptocurrency that would be uh, a stable currency, a stable coin, pegged to a basket of currencies, world currencies, not just the U.S. dollar, but the U.S. dollar, the euro, and, and uh, a whole bunch of other... The ruble? For, a whole bunch of other <laughs> uh, foreign currencies. Or as I like to call it, the rubble. And <laughs> for one reason or another, central bankers, you know, Jerome Powell doesn't like it, Donald Trump tweeted against it. Politicians and central bankers think this is sacrilege. Why are they worried? Are they worried about the dollar losing its uh, uh, preeminent position as the world's petrochemical reserve currency? I think we're on that path regardless. And I think it's sad. I think we, if, I, if I were able to rule the world, we'd get rid of the Federal Reserve System. We'd have a free market in money valuation based on a, a silver or gold standard. In fact, it was Alan Greenspan that once wrote that any nation that abandons the gold standard basis for its currency is doomed to failure. And, and J.P. Morgan said, J.P. Morgan, one of, the, one of the people who sound, founded the Federal Reserve said, uh, there is no money other than gold. <laughs> so there you go. People will do whatever works for them in the, in the short to medium well, term. Some, some of the comments that the, that the um, Politicians in the hearings had uh, one uh, one Democrat, and I'm sure some Republicans. Let me be careful about what, what labels I use there. Um, had some equally stupid things to say, but one of them said that uh, that this um, type of currency would would uh, do more damage to the United States than 9/11. That it was an assault on, on, on uh, the the uh, the United States. That it was uh, uh, basically the equivalent of a, a terrorist act, only with when it came to money, and 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 went on and on and on. And if you strip all that away, in many cases, if you look at uh, I don't know what what 9/11 cost. If you look at the ridiculous toilet flushing, that it's Homeland Security and and the money we spend on all these foreign wars and everything, when well, 9 9-11 cost us, what, a couple trillion dollars, not counting the interest on all the money we spent? More than that, And, but, yeah. and if you look at the, the economy, you know, that tanked maybe five, 10 trillion. Um, 
and and you know people losing faith in in the U.S. dollar could be a hundred trillion dollar event. But so in a way it's true. But you know if if you have a sound currency, nobody can threaten it. Who has a sound currency? I said I think <laughs> probably the Swiss might be it. No, be not anymore. Not they, anymore. They've, not anymore. They've there are no sound fiat so, currencies. So where politicians there is are. not there is no such thing as a sound. Uh, paper currency for the simple reason that everybody that has a paper currency is controlled by a central bank which has the ability to make more pieces of paper currency at will whenever they damn well they feel like it and that's frequently. They don't even do that. It's like ones and zeros. Yeah, well, and they call the, it the, equivalent, uh, the yeah. equivalent is the same thing. They call it inflation, but it's actually it's uh, currency devaluation. Uh, print money that doesn't have any value behind it and Whatever dollars you hold are shrinking in value. Yeah, yeah. Richard got Crazy so man. excited that he I pulled, destroyed I pulled the, the microphone. I pulled the mic cord. Yeah, it's oh. flailing about. Yeah. Let's so for our let's thousands of listeners and, and viewers, I'm sorry about that sound, that unintentional sound the effect in the background. <laughs> I see the phone banks are just lit up with people calling <laughs> to complain. A uh, uh, Pacific Legal Foundation case. This is over one hundred forty-four dollars. Perez versus Wayne County. Tell us about it. Well, this is another, um, it's uh, the, the organization I work for, uh, Pacific Legal Foundation, basically defends the Constitution of the United States and individual liberty and, and uh, people's right to, to live and, and work as they choose without you know, extraordinary government interference. And they do a darn good job. Um, our, the attorneys are just wonderful. And, <coughs> and it, it the problem is, is that 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 governments really are immoral. Uh, I had a donor when he read about this story said, "How do those people sleep at night doing this?" The Perez family, immigrant family, um, live in in New Jersey. You know, the the father, a hardworking guy, scrimping, saving, providing for his family, working long hours. One of his daughters, they uh, they had people in Detroit, Michigan. And they, they wanted to, to join them, so they bought an investment property for apartments and a very dilapidated house for $60,000. And, and this is Detroit. I mean, it up is. until very recently, you could buy a mansion, a brick mansion, for $50,000. So and pay for it with your credit card. Um, well, you could, but <laughs> a lot of people could. Okay, maybe, never mind. We'll talk about So somebody was abusing this. So, Oh. So they, they drove up uh, to work on this thing 11 hours from New Jersey to Detroit. They'd work on it, you know, on long weekends and lose sleep. And they built these places up and, and they, were, they were fixing to, that Texas word, um, phrase, um, thinking about moving the family there so they could be around the rest of their, their folks. Um, well, they, they neglected to pay, they'd underpaid 2014 tax by $144. They were paying their taxes regularly. They were though, paying right? their taxes regularly. And Wayne County um, decided that uh, this was an opportunity for them to acquire this place. They, Wayne County tacked on an extra $359 in interest and penalties. So if I can do my math upside down and backwards, that's. Uh, Six hundred and three dollars, or five hundred and three dollars, five hundred and three dollars. They spent sixty thousand dollars plus all the sweat equity. Uh, Wayne County foreclosed on the properties and sold them for a hundred and eight thousand dollars. And guess how much of that they gave back to the Perezes after they uh, after they satisfied the the uh, six hundred and three dollars that was owed. They probably penalized them more. They gave them zero dollars back. They put a hundred and seven thousand three hundred and ninety-seven dollars, if I did my my math correctly, in their pocket. And this happens all the time. It happens in numerous states. There are some states that actually have a little business going where they they kind of have an aftermarket for these properties and people bid on them. And in, in a number of states, it's part of the, the line item in, in the budget for the locality, which is profit from tax lien sales. And, and you know, the Constitution says that, that flat out, if the government takes your property, 
it needs to pay you for it. Now, of course, the government has the ability to tax, and they could sell your property to satisfy that, but they can't take the money and put it in their freaking pocket. They have they, to they, they can satisfy the tax lien. They can satisfy the tax lien. But not but not not not, uh, not profit not the whole, $107, yeah. and dollars except that they can. But they did. Yeah. But not for long cuz the the you guys know the pitbulls reputation for grabbing on and never letting go. Um, you and know, we're the Detroit's the, reputation for corruption too. That's all, it rivals Sacramento's. I mean, it's it's bad. Very likely, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, but I just I I pity the fool. Remember from the A team that I pity the fool. Uh, that those people are the attorneys um, that are going after them care about people like the Perez's. The organization cares about the Constitution. They care about the law. They care about justice, and and the Perez's will have their day. And I wouldn't be surprised if not only do they get the money back, but that, that the law in that state's going to be changed because the, the organization did it in Montana. And then Montana, I think it was Montana, they had a little racket going on for years, same kind of thing. And, and this is not isolated. Government agencies and cities and counties do this kind of theft um, all the time. It kind of reminds you that we think we have private property, but uh, how private is it when we don't pay our tax bill? And it's, we find uh, out who really owns our really property. Owns it. Yeah, the yeah. people, uh, you know, they talk about these horrible corporations, but I've never seen, uh, uh, you know, Walmart uh, send an armed party over to Target to, to get some customers. Yeah. But by gosh, you don't pay your taxes, the revenue will show up and put a gun at, at your head. And so, the saddest part of this tale yeah. is it's people like the Perez's who could bring truly a renaissance to Detroit, which it desperately needs, yeah. and yeah. that kind of abuse should yeah. not put an end to that kind of... Uh, so here we're talking about $144. Let's talk about something that's a, a tad more. It's uh, a fine for refusal to testify uh, being raised from $500 to $1,000 per day. And I'm talking, of course, about Chelsea Manning. She's refusing to testify in uh, the uh, Julian Assange uh, case, and uh, the, uh, the uh, refusal to testify uh, is considered a uh, contempt of court, $500 per day, and you stay in jail. Uh, now, Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, along with Edward Snowden, are probably three of the most heroic people in the country today, because yeah. they have stood up to the national intelligence behemoth and exposed all of the wrongdoing by our intelligence agencies and so forth. This <laughs> is awful and we're out of time, but we'll see you again next yes, week. We'll. Same Can time, we? same place, Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for watching us on WWW Access Sacramento, on YouTube Continue. and on Channel 17 in Sacramento and on Facebook. Have a good week. Thank you, Richard.